Okay, what's going on traders? So today, we are back with another exciting lesson just for you. Okay, so uh, we get a lot of questions from our subscribers uh, regarding, you know, how do they build their own um, trading plan. So uh, we come up with this uh, PowerPoint slide or rather this uh, YouTube video to share with you how um, you can actually develop your own trading plan. Okay, so um, this is the seven step process uh, that we use. Okay, so uh, when it comes to trading plan, you need to understand that uh, the trading plan is something that uh, is very personal. So uh, it's something that, uh, you know, it might work for me, but it might not work for you. Okay, so that's why uh, whenever you design a trading plan, you need to uh, consider your own uh, psychologies. Right, you need to consider your own beliefs about the market. For example, um, are you a short-term trader? Are you a long-term trader? Uh, how often can you check the charts? So uh, there's a lot of factors to consider, but um, this video will cover the seven steps uh, that will take you from you know, not having a trading plan into having a trading plan. Okay, so of course, uh, you need to follow uh, each of these steps. Okay, so um, the first step, Okay, the first step is that uh, you need to understand uh, your trader profile. Okay, so what is a trader profile? Uh, trader profile basically means uh, what kind of trader are you? Okay, uh, are you a scalper? Okay, do you like to day trade? Uh, are you a swing trader? And I, or are you like a position trader? Okay, um, this is very important to uh, establish. Okay, uh, one more thing that I want to highlight is that uh, maybe you want to day trade. Okay, you like day trading, you, you, you enjoy it. But uh, maybe you are working, maybe you have a full-time job, okay? So um, it's not possible for you to day trade. So in that case, even though uh, you like to day trade, uh, but your lifestyle, right, doesn't fit uh, a day trader lifestyle because maybe if you want to day trade, you need to be standing in charts the entire day and that requires you to be at home instead of, you know, at, at work, you know, working for someone. Okay, so make sure to consider not just what you like to do, but whether your current lifestyle is able to accommodate it, okay? So if you are still struggling as a trader, uh, do not quit your job yet. If you have a job, right, don't quit your job to, uh, to trade because it's very stressful for you and you haven't proven to yourself that you are able to make money consistently, okay? So what you should do is uh, try to uh, fit your profile means what you like uh, with like your lifestyle. So if let's say you, 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 you are working, okay, um, and you can only really see the charts in the night. So you might want to consider swing trading in the night. It means every night when you go home, maybe that's like 8 p.m., right, 9 p.m., go home, take a look at a charts, okay, and uh, say, okay, I'm going to take this trade and uh, I'm going to close it in maybe within the week or I just hold it for a couple of days, okay. So step number one is you need to identify your trader profile, okay. So now let's move on to step number two, okay? So step number two involves risk management. Okay, risk management is very, very important. In fact, risk management comes even before trading strategy. You notice over here that uh, point number two, or rather step number two is risk management, not about strategies, not about you know how to take profit, not about your stop loss, but your risk, okay? Because in trading, you can never get it uh, right 100%. Okay, think about it. You cannot even get it wrong 100% of the time. Right, even if you want to lose money every single time, you can't lose money every single time. So why do you think you can expect to make money every single time? So you can't, right? So that's where risk management comes into play. Okay, you, it doesn't matter how profitable a strategy is if you do not have risk management in play. So always have your risk management in play as part of your trading plan. Okay, so normally we recommend to have uh, just like one to three percent per trade. So if let's say you're trading a ten thousand dollars account, one percent would be hundred dollars. So each each trade you should risk hundred dollars. Okay. So of course there's different types of risk management. There is adaptive position sizing which we teach. Okay, if you have not watched this, watch our other video about how to position size your uh, your trades. Okay, if not, you do a fixed position. So what's the difference? Okay, in adaptive, it means that uh, let's say every trade you risk hundred dollars. Okay, and it, it considers that each trade you have different stop loss. Maybe this trade you have a thirty pip stop loss. Next trade you have hundred pip stop loss. So of course, if your stop loss is wider, then you're going to have a bigger position. Sorry, if your stop loss is wider, then you're going to have a smaller position size. Okay, but if your um, stop loss is tighter. Okay, that means you want a bigger position size. Okay, that's adaptive position sizing. Okay, fixed position sizing means that, um, for example, every single trade you trade 0 0.1. Okay, uh, 0 0.1 is actually a mini lot. 
Okay, uh, we don't really recommend this because uh, if you are not careful, okay, and you have a trade which has like a hundred pips stop loss, and you trade zero point one versus a trade that has zero point three, okay, the hundred pips stop loss is going to going to damage your account quite badly. Correct, because you, you are trading zero point one, you're trading a bigger position size even though your stop loss is wider. Okay, so but a fixed position sizing is the fastest way, one of the it is a better way to grow your account because you in a sense that you are trading bigger. Okay, and when your stop loss is wider, you're still trading big. Okay, but if you are a beginner, we still uh, recommend towards adapting the uh, adaptive position sizing. Okay, so check out other video. Okay, now to the step three. Okay, step three, we want to talk about market conditions. Okay, so your, your trading plan has to define uh, what kind of market conditions uh, that you are trading. Are you trading a ranging market or are you trading a trend market? Okay, so if you are trading a ranging market, that means ideally you want to sell low, sell high, sorry, sell high and buy low. Okay, you, you need to define in your trading plan. Um, okay, let's say this is a bullish, uh, it's bullish, but it's in a range. Are you allowed to sell the top or are you only allowed to buy the, the bottom? Okay, so it means if you are in an uptrend but price is ranging now, can you just buy? Can you buy and sell or can you only buy? Okay, conversely, the other market condition that you want to talk about is trending. So trending, I think as the name uh, suggests, I mean, everyone knows what a trend is. Trend means that it's going one direction. Uh, are you trading this kind of trends? Okay, if you are trading trends, right, um, are, you are you going to trade breakouts or are you going to trade, uh, you know, uh, just buying off support? Okay, so uh, you need to define your market conditions. Okay, now let's move on to step four. Okay, step four is the instruments that you are going to trade. Okay, uh, in our channel, we trade Forex, but uh, this trading plan is not uh, like this seven-step process. It's not uh, restricted to Forex, okay? Um, regardless of whether you're trading stocks, options, futures, indexes, whatever, you must always have a plan in play, okay? So we always say that, uh, you know, it's a very common saying that if you do not plan, you plan to fail, okay? And that's very true when it comes to trading. Okay, most people lose money because they don't prepare. Okay, on Saturdays, Sundays, you know, they're out having fun with their family, and that's all good. Okay, but if, if you've been following our channel sometime, you know that every Saturday is our preparation day. And the reason why we are successful is because every Saturday we look through the trades that we've taken and we look through the markets, right? We look, we plan ahead, we prepare. Okay, we prepare hard using uh, this trading plan uh, that we have created. Okay, so next on, let's move to uh, step number five. Okay, now step number five involves a strategy. Okay, strategy is very similar to market condition. So once you define a market condition, okay, your market condition will kind of determine uh, your strategy. Okay, because if you are trading, trading a trending uh, market, if your trading plan involves trading the um, trending market, then ideally you'll be going to be looking at a pullbacks, means pullbacks to support, or retracement, right? Pullbacks the same as retracement. Or you want to trade breakouts, okay? Then if you are trading a ranging market, then of course your strategy will be the range, okay? Then as we said earlier on, uh, if it's a range, are you allowed to buy and sell both ends of the range or are you only allowed to uh, follow the trend? So if it's uptrend, you only buy. If it's a downtrend, uh, you only sell the top of the range, okay? So moving on to step six, okay? Having a stop loss, okay? Stop loss is part of kind of very similar to risk management. Okay, risk management deals with how much you risk, but stop loss deals with when to get out. Okay, you need both. You cannot just have one. Okay, you cannot just say, "Oh, I risk three percent and I don't have stop loss." Okay, it doesn't work that way. Okay, if you risk three percent, right, you have the right position sizing, but you don't put a stop loss. Okay, that position size can still blow your account. Okay, if price just trends against you massively, doesn't come back, you know, just keeps trending, your 3% loss, supposedly loss, right, because you're supposed to put a stop loss there, becomes a 10% loss because uh, you do not have a stop loss, okay? So, we always advise you to put your stop loss below uh, above market structure, okay? Put in an area which if, if the stop loss is hit, then you are likely to be wrong, okay? Don't just put it anywhere, okay? Because you put it anywhere, um, the brokers like to, sorry, not really brokers, but institutions, they like to uh, hunt your stop loss, okay? Because you must understand that trading is a zero-sum game, okay? Meaning that uh, for me to make money, you need to lose money, okay? So I will push price against you to stop you out so that you lose money and I make money, right? The moment you get stopped out, I enter, 
Okay, so when you sell, I buy from you. So that's how the market works. So always put your stop loss, um, you know, somewhere which uh, is unlikely to be hit. And if it's hit, uh, that means that you are wrong. Okay. Okay, and now the final step. Okay. The final step deals with trade management and take profit. How are you going to take your profits? Okay, you handled the downside. Okay, most importantly is to handle the downside. But once you have the downside uh, handled, the next question is take profit. How do you take profit? You need to have a take profit plan. You cannot just assume that market will always uh, trend in one direction. Okay, you've been trading some time, you know that the market rarely trends one direction. Okay, it always comes back and forth, back and forth. So you need to have uh, um, kind of like a strategy to take profit. Okay, so there are two ways you can do it. Number one is fixed target. Fixed target means that, okay, um, I'm risking 30 pips for this trade, so I'm going to take 30 pips, right? Because you're going to take one is to one, okay? Nothing wrong with that. You can take one is to one, you can take one is to two, one is to three. That's totally up to you. That's how you set it. Of course, uh, as you continue to trade and as you diligently journal down your trades, you have insights about, oh, you know, actually, I can actually take 60 pips, you know, I can take 90 pips. You know, price tend to hit, um, tend to hit 60 pips. Price tend to hit 120 pips before it reverses. Then you can revise your trading plan um, to fit this, okay? But for a start, um, you can try fixed, fixed target, okay? Uh, one is to one is a good, one is to one, meaning that uh, if you are risking 30 pips, taking profit at 30 pips uh, gain, or rather shifting stop loss to break even at uh, one is to one risk to reward, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's suggested, it's rather a common practice, you can do that. Alternatively, you can do a trailing uh, take profit, meaning that you just keep shifting your, your profit, your, your, your stop loss, right, higher. So as you are, you, you know, as the trade takes off, you just keep shifting your profits up, meaning you don't actually close the trade but you let the trade run okay and then when price you know starts to reverse it stops you out at your stop loss which is already at a profit level so basically just shift your stop loss higher and higher and higher or lower and lower and lower depending on whether you are buying or you are selling okay so these are the seven steps that we use okay so just as a brief recap okay uh, number one we talked about a trader profile okay you need to know uh, what kind of uh, what kind of lifestyle you have and uh, what do you like doing you need to match the two. Okay, step number two, we talk about risk management, how risk management is the most important part. Step number three, defining the market conditions that your trading system or trading strategy revolves around. Step number four would be the instruments that you wish to trade. Step number five would be the strategy. Okay, the strategy is closely uh, linked to uh, market conditions. And number six will be the stop loss. When are you going to get out? Okay, because it's not important. It's not just pivotal that you have a, uh, proper risk management, but you must exit when you are wrong. Okay, that's how you uh, reduce your losses. And step seven, we talk about um, how you need to take profit, right? Because a uh, market doesn't always trend one way. Okay, so this sums up um, this lesson. Okay, if you need more help uh, for our trading, um, you know, coming out of trading plan, or if you have a question, a comment down below, write into us at support at financialmarketwizards.com. Okay, and if you're new to our channel, uh, please subscribe. Okay, we come out, we are trying to come out at least two videos like this every single week to teach you more, right? To cover the basic concepts because we understand that a lot of you uh, do not have a firm understanding of the uh, foundations. Okay, and we always say that uh, you need to have a strong foundation because uh, whatever you build, right? Tricks, strategies, uh, tips that we give is built on your foundation. Okay, so if you don't have a strong foundation, then uh, building all these tips and tricks on top of it is uh, it's not going to work. Okay, so you need to have the basics uh, nailed down. Okay, and this is uh, one of the basics that you need to have if you want to be a profitable trader. Okay, and as always, if you have any questions, let us know, and we'll see you in the next video.